What's up everybody and welcome back to another Safe Buys video. I'm Safe and today I wanted to give you my quick review here on the Be Apple Beats Fit Pro. Now Beats Fit Pro are a great pair of earbuds. They're probably the most secure earbuds I've ever tried. They have great sound quality, noise cancellation, a whole nine yards with these ones and you can find them for really great prices right now on Black Friday sales and you got Cyber Monday as well as well as like the general holiday sales. You always know those discounts usually extend beyond you know the specific days where they mention the sales. But uh, this is a great price point. Great buds. If you already have them, you know, good on you. If you're thinking about buying them for someone, let me walk you through why you may or may not want to buy this for someone or why you may or may not want to buy this for yourself. Now, we'll start off with comfort. Now, comfort is the most important thing when it comes to an earbud, and it's why you should always buy your earbuds from a place that allows you to return them or at least exchange earbuds. Now, we all know that Amazon has a generous return policy on almost all their electronic products. We know that Costco has another generous return policy with 90 days all, for year, all year round to return your electronic products. And uh, Best Buy allows exchanges. So at least that's in Canada. I'm sure in the US the policies are even more forgiving, <laughs> as is usually the case. But um, we'll start off with comfort. Yeah, because that's the most important piece. So for me, and all I can say is for me, these are really comfortable and have a really good secure fit. Even more secure than the beats the power beats uh, in my opinion the power beats while they do hook around your ear they do tend to like fall out of mind like they pop out and it's annoying i have to keep adjusting it especially in the gym um the beats fit pro on the other hand they just remain really deep in there and like they're secure even when i'm working out i'm going for a run they're just super secure so comfort it's a check right there now you might be wondering why why am i abandoning this <laughs> not even sure if I said that in the beginning, but I am going to be moving away from this and using the AirPods Pro 2nd Gen full-time. And that's mainly on account of the fact of the AirPods Pro 2nd Gen, they just have way more features and uh, like they're more comfortable in my opinion. I'll post a link here to the uh, comparison video I made, but we're just going to focus on reviewing these on their own merit without necessarily comparing them to the AirPods Pro at every, ch every chance we get. So in terms of everyday comfort for these ones, I got to say, I do t tend to feel the wingtip in my ear, like if I'm wearing this, you know, just in the at home, you know, while you're working at home or you're just walking around, you really do tend to feel, or at least I tend to feel the wingtips, you know, in my ear eventually, like maybe after an hour of wearing them or so. And that could get annoying for some people, some people more than others, you know, but when I'm working out, do I feel those wingtips at all? No, like, you know, you're experiencing a lot more pain, a lot more stress on your body than the slight discomfort that these wingtips may or may not cause on the inside of your ear. The security of the fit more than makes up for, you know, the slight discomfort, especially in a setting where you're working out or you're doing intense you know jogging or running or bicycling or anything where you really want to make sure these aren't falling out of your ears the airpods pro do have an attachment that will allow you them to carry a wingtip and again i tried to refrain from talking about the airpods but the airpods pro do have an attachment that could turn them into a wingtip and i'll post a link to that video as well somewhere maybe in the comments but uh, yeah so comfort is a go largely but for everyday comfort i would say it's not a go so it's comfortable in the gym but not comfortable every day that's a negative for me now we'll move on to my why these are a great value overall now you can currently find them for around their their msrp like their starting price i believe was 199 on apple's website that's without with no sale but you can find them for as low as like 120 usd i think on with the black friday and cyber monday sales and so that's a really great value you compare that for example to the latest airpods pro second gen those are 249.99 last i checked on apple's website granted of course you can get deals on each one now I'll jump over to the sound quality. So sound quality on these is really good. I, when I switched over from the AirPods Pro first gen over to these, I definitely noticed a big improvement in bass and overall like isolation. And I felt like, I don't know, I just felt the overall sound was much better. Okay, I'm not an audiophile. I'll just say they sounded better. In terms of noise canceling, it was decent. It wasn't as good as the AirPods Pro first gen, yet, yet alone the second gen AirPods, but uh, it was pretty decent. Um, Transparency mode was also decent. It's a little bit more robotic sounding than the AirPods Pro first gen, but again, it's no, it's not obvious. Like you really have to wear them interchangeably to be able to clearly tell a difference. Like I need to wear the AirPods Pro then switch to this to be able to clearly. But if you've went, only ever worn this and you've tried the transparency mode, I don't think you'll really find too much of a fault with it. As far as portability and the case goes, the case is great. I actually prefer it in terms of the material they used to the AirPods Pro, mainly because it doesn't scratch. It's like a matte material. Now, the case is larger than the AirPods Pro case. I keep comparing it to the AirPods Pro. Anyway, it, this won't necessarily fit in your coin pocket, okay? But it will fit in your general pocket or your jacket pocket or your gym bag for sure, okay? It'll just look too bulgy if you try and squeeze it in your, your pant pockets, I think, especially if you wear, like, tighter pants. Let me try doing that, actually, right now. We're just going to put it there. You're walking around. You're walking around with this bulge right here. Anyway, that's what it looks like. It's doable for sure. But I don't know if that's the kind of life you want to live. Now, 
In terms of the case as well, let me talk about the charging capability. So this charges by USB-C, it does not have wireless charging, but you know, everybody has a laptop charger lying around. If you have a modern, modern day laptop, you have a USB-C cable, it's easy to just plug in, you know, when you're not using it. Lack of wireless charging doesn't really make it or break it for me. It's convenient, but not a make or break. The case also has Find My, sorry, the buds have Find My capability. So each individual earbud has Find My capability, but when they're in the case, the buds are closed. So like really, if you lose it, Inside the case, it'll really just show you the last known location or the last time it detected that they were connected to your phone. It won't show you anything else. So, in my opinion, that's useless. I thought the Find My On the AirPods Pro first gen was pretty useless, and on this one too, it's useless. The second gen, they finally fixed that. You can find the case, you know, whether it's in the case, out of the case, you can find a case separately, you can find each individual bud separately, but that is not the case with this one. So, Find My is a limited feature, really, of limited utility, I'd say, with the Beats Fit Pro. And another benefit of the Beats Fit Pro, I would say, is the colors, okay? Like, if you're someone who really cares about what, what color your buds are, then the Beats Fit Pro comes in the wise variety of colors I've seen in any earbud, really. I think it comes in, like, skin tones, too, with the Kim Kardashian, you know, skin tones line. And really, it's, it's pretty aesthetically pleasing overall, like, the buds and the, and the case. Now, I want to sort of make a reference here to, depending on which ecosystem you're in. So if you're in the Apple ecosystem, I would say that the Beats Fit Pro are a great purchase. You know, it, it has, you can easily switch between all your different Apple devices, your iPad, your, your MacBook, your, your iPhone. But if you do want to pair it with something that is non-Apple, you can do it with relative ease, like a regular pair of like Bluetooth earbuds. But what it lacks is the multi-pairing, uh, multi-point Bluetooth pairing. So it can't pair, for example, with an Android phone and your PC, at least not to my knowledge, and then allow you to quickly interchange between the two. You'd have to like disconnect from one and connect to the other one in order to get, you know, something that is where like if I'm playing video on one, it just stops and then when I play video on the other one, it just continues that the sound starts coming from that device or this, the video from that device, that's the sound you'll hear. That was convoluted. Maybe I'll re erase that. Anyway, lack of multi-Bluetooth Multi-point Bluetooth pairing is quite a downside, and I will say, like, my Bose QC35, like, those are, like, four-year-old, like, headphones have multi-point Bluetooth pairing, and it's pretty convenient. Sometimes it works even more seamlessly than the Apple, like, H1 chip that's in this one, I think. I think this one has the H1 chip, because being able to multi-point pair, I was able to switch, like, from my MacBook to my phone, and it's, just in my experience, the regular Bluetooth functionality of being able to pair to two devices has been more seamless than the account transfer of like however Apple does the connection with the H1 chip between the different devices. Now it's good and in fact if you have an Apple TV it's like even better because you don't have to go into like the TV settings to like pull up your buds like anytime I just open my buds I like just put it in my ear and then I notice the Beats Fit Pro show up on the screen and then it tells me okay like uh, click on your Apple TV remote and you can pair and listen through your buds like that's pretty seamless but anyway I don't think it makes up for the fact that they don't have multi-point Bluetooth pairing I think that's a necessary feature especially if you're not in the Apple ecosystem in which case if you're not in the Apple ecosystem I'd only get these if you're having trouble finding a comfortable earbuds that will stay in your ear and are lightweight and you sound pretty good too so if you're struggling with comfort and you've you know you've shopped around in the market for non Apple like non beats non Apple earbuds but you can't find anything that works for you, this might be the bud for you. Now let's talk about controls. I want to quickly talk about controls. So on the buds themselves, there's basically a tactile button there on each bud, and you can customize what the controls do. The default is actually pretty annoying because I was on a call with tech support basically, or what was it, like customer support with my phone provider, and I 30 minutes into the call, I accidentally like laid on a pillow, and then it, I pressed this button here, when I laid on the pillow and yeah, it ended the call right there. That was a waste of 40 minutes. So that was pretty annoying, but I assume you could probably change the controls to make it like a double tap to end the call. That would make more sense. But anyway, the default was pretty annoying. I wouldn't be able to sleep in these, for example. That's another big thing I should bring up. You can't sleep in these mainly because as you ro roll around or whatever, if you are using the controls in any capacity really on the buds, you'll end up like forwarding your music, pausing your music, playing it, uh, and yeah, that could be annoying too. Another downside of the controls is you can't control the volume through the buds themselves. You'd have to use your Apple Watch. And the process to use basically volume control on your Apple Watch is a little tedious. It's not very seamless. Like there's several clicks involved. Let's just say that. Especially, and if you're not even on in the Apple ecosystem, then really like you have to control the volume through your uh, through your phone. Let me double check that actually. Maybe you can control the volume on the Beats Fit Pro Buds by like tapping and holding or something. I don't know. I'm going to Google that and add it, but I definitely never used it. Anyway, let me say that the Beats Fit Pro are a great purchase, but if you're leaning towards the AirPods Pro, I would grab a pair of wingtips if you are concerned about the security of the fit, and I'll link a video to that at the end here. 
Anyway, the Beats Fit Pro are definitely great. If you already own them, please add a comment as to, you know, your experience with them. If you feel like I've missed anything, some big pro or anything with these, I think when they upgrade these to better match the features of the AirPods Pro 2. I feel like they're gonna leave out certain key features if they ever do that, but uh, if they do ever upgrade it, it will then genuinely be a top contender. But right now it's a great value, great pair of earbuds, and I don't think most people will regret buying this, provided of course it fits properly in their ear and they are comfortable with that. Again, that is a key disclaimer there with any earbud. The most important feature happens to be the most subjective, and that's just an unfortunate feature of earbuds. Anyway, Catch you on the next episode, guys. More videos like this. If you could drop a like, subscribe if you feel like it, and I will catch you on the next video.